Hello friends, this is Jim with Science Talk. And in this video segment, I wish to discuss with you primarily this slide that we're looking at right now and uh, a couple others, but all related to atmospheric level of CO2. In this uh, particular slide, this is pretty much the history from the Cambrian explosion onwards. So we're talking about well, the data goes back to approximately 550, 560 million years ago. So uh, that is what we see here on the horizontal scale. Uh, at the far left is 600 million years ago to zero, which is present time. On the right vertical scale, we see the average global temperature from 12 to 22 degrees C. On the left vertical scale, we see the, the atmospheric CO2 in parts per million, going from zero to 8,000. Now, a, the black line that we see here throughout, okay, that's the atmospheric CO2. The blue line that we see is the average global temperature. So, what are some of the overall general uh, trends that we can see here? Looking at the CO2, we see that it reached its highest of, of about 7,000 parts per million, approximately 530, 540 million years ago. And then it, it drops with a couple little upticks, and then it continues to drop. And we have a major uptick right here in the Devonian, and then it plummets into the Carboniferous, rises again at the, you know, into the Permian, into the Jurassic, it reaches its highest in the middle of the, excuse me, the Permian into the Triassic, reaches its highest in the Jurassic, and then begins to steadily uh, decline, a couple little bumps here and there, until modern times, and I'll show you those slides uh, in a moment later on, where we can uh, we see the current trends in atmospheric CO2. So, um, Why such a high level here? Very simply put, uh, vol volcanism. Lots of volcanic activity. Uh, volcanoes spew lots of CO2, SO2 into the atmosphere. Okay, so we see a lot. So this is due to vol volcanic activity. Then it drops off, it's drawn down, so forth. A couple upticks, probably from more volcanism and the like as well as here, and we see a really steady drawdown until we get to the Permian-Triassic, where it rises again. And this, by the way, is where the great dying occurred, major mass extinction in Earth's history, some 95% uh, or so of life forms uh, went extinct. Now, I have discussed with you in the past the cautionary notes one must uh, consider when looking at these values, and namely the high error that is associated with it. We have made ways to measure and estimate the CO2, but when you go this far back, those techniques are, have errors and uh, issues, problems associated with them. When we get to the ice cores, for like the last 800,000 of 1 million years, we've gotten, we're very confident in our measurements because we have numerous sources to verify our results. Keep in mind the earth is covered with tectonic plates. Right? The plates are always moving around. You have subduction zones. The oceanic crust goes into the subduction zone and any such information is then lost because when the, when the crust goes into the subduction zone, that rock is heated up and any you know, fossils or isotopic information is lost forever. So there are big error margins here. Uh, as an example, let's just say I take a measurement and let's just say my measurement is uh, 1,000, whatever it may be. But because of the errors and when I calculate the confidence interval, my confidence interval will give me an interval from 100 to 1900. 
What does that mean? And if I'm using, say, a 95% confidence interval, well, that tells me that the true value of whatever I am measuring is in this interval from 100 to 1900. That's a big range, and that reflects the big error. That's what happens with a lot of these back here. So we have that issue. Now, if I, using my example, if I have a measure of 1,000 and my confidence interval of 95%, it tells me that my interval is from 980 to 1020. That means we've re really narrowed it down. We have very accurate, very precise results. We can be pretty, we feel pretty good about our measurements. So small confidence interval usually reflects higher precision, higher accurate uh, measurements. So, so keep that in mind. So as we see here, you know, we have these high uh, levels of CO2 and look, these atmospheric temperature is fairly steady at about 22 degrees C. And then, boom, look what happens uh, in the late Ordovician moving into the Silurian. Temperatures tank. Why? There was a major glaciation event that took place then. Major glaciation event. Then the glaciation event ended. Presumably, if you see here, the CO2 levels rise, so that starts bringing the temperatures up. And uh, then they go back almost to the 22 degrees C, and they start tanking. And then look at here, right? At the end of the Carboniferous, it pretty much bottoms out. There was another glaciation event, and this glaciation event was in the Southern Hemisphere. Interestingly enough, at this point in Earth's history, most of the continental landmass was, was in the Southern Hemisphere. It's not, it wasn't until uh, in the last several epochs that it all has moved, most of it has moved to the Northern Hemisphere. It goes to show you how dynamic the, the plate tectonics uh, are, were, and so forth. Uh, so we have, so this indicates major glaciation events. And you can also see, especially this one here, the CO2 level tanks. Now, a little bit of a lag for the temperatures to drop, but the CO2 tanks, especially here, and we have a prolonged glaciation event. Then uh, the Siberian uh, activities, there was a, uh, a whole bunch of vulcan volcanic activity in what is now present-day Siberia, uh, and they, they think the eruption lasted about 100,000 years, continual eruption. That's adding a lot of CO2. And we then see uh, the warming, you know, the rise in the CO2 level, and then it starts to draw down. There is another reason why we see rapid drawdowns in the CO2 going from the Devonian into the Carboniferous, and then in the, starting in the Cretaceous going into the Tertiary. Namely, the formation of deep water. Here, there is no deep water formation. When we see these events here, there's deep water formation as well. Deep water basically takes, does what? It takes nutrients, it takes atmospheric CO2 and it sequesters it from the surface, be it oceanic or land. It sequesters it, it buries it. As I discussed in my isotopic fractionation video, we can look at certain uh, isotopes in the sediments, look at the del 13C or del 18O, and from those measurements, we can ascertain what you know, what the temperatures were, what the glaciation was like, if, at, if any. We can ascertain if there's the presence of deep water via upwelling. So uh, I refer you uh, uh, to, to that video that I did. I did a lengthy uh, explanation in that video. So what we're seeing here, deep water formation here and here. Okay, This is the result this high level CO2 is a result of volcanic activity. These upticks are also volcanic activity here, 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 and then in here on the Siberian flats, more volcanic activity, and then it drops off. Earth be, 
because of its radioactive decay, help uh, fuel a lot of the volcanic activity early on in its history, has been a subsidence uh, as time goes on. So uh, as, you, as you note here, as the CO2 levels are dropping, there is a bit of a lag in what the global temperature is before coming down. Now, this is a little more recent. This is in thousands of years before present, so it's not millions, right? Over here we have hundreds of millions of years. But here's going back 450,000 years, and what do we see here? The previous peak at 325,000 years before present. Okay. And this is the CO2 level here. And we see it almost looks like a sawtooth wave. You see that the levels draw down, you know, kind of ragged, but a, a, a little slower, but they will spike more readily. Right? So we see a spike here, it draws down, a spike here, it draws down, a spike here, and it draws down. And look what's happening here. Now it's just zooming out of control. This takes us up to uh, about 2,000. You know, it go, the graph goes up to 400. We are uh, at 417, 421, 423, depending who, what reference uh, source you uh, look at. But you can see it is really taking off, literally. It's, it's almost asymptotic. Almost. It's, I mean, from 280 to 420, say, in about 170 years is a significant increase. We simply don't see that anywhere in the records. Not that, not that fast, that high of a rate of increase. This is sort of another uh, graph. Let's see if I can enlarge this a little bit. There. And again, here's that 325 that I just showed you in the previous uh, slide. This horizontal dashed line, for centuries, atmospheric CO2 had never been above this line. And boom. And now if you look at this, that travels across the 400, but I said we're close now to 420. It's a 1950 level. We're already pushing it. So, um, this is kind of a, 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 a little bit of a narrowing in on recent times. And as I just did a video on Milankovic, where he looked at orbital forcing as bringing on the ice ages as well. Um, that ties in together, but not totally. And uh, I just completed a video where I discussed... Um, Again, where I discuss um, how the conveyor belt is causing rapid climate change on a time scale where the Milankovitch is not, the, the, when we look at the signals within Milankovitch, it's not going to be picked up by. As I mentioned before, Milankovitch doesn't explain all the variation. Some of the other variations can be anthropogenic effect, uh, conveyor belt, plate tectonics, to name a few of those factors. So here's a history, as best as we can tell, of CO2 levels in the past. But as I said before at the outset, you have to look at this with caution because you have to take into account the errors associated with that. When we get to these measurements here, uh, we have a low error, so we're pretty certain of these values. We can we can measure the CO2 levels and the atmospheric uh, uh, and deduce the atmospheric temperature from looking at the sediment cores, the ice cores, looking at the fractionation, especially of uh, del 13C and del 18O. We get all the information. So I just wanted to uh, put together this quick little uh, video for you. And these dips that we see here and here are due to glaciation. And by the way, the Carboniferous era is basically the era that gives us fossil fuels. So um, 
more burning the, the the like the coal and the oil, the crude, and so on. That's coming from primarily from this time period. So, thank you for your time, and we'll talk soon. Hey folks, this is Jim here reminding you to uh, subscribe uh, to this channel, to uh, share my videos, tell others of the work that I do here. Uh, I also ask that if you are not already a, a patron at Patreon, to please uh, consider becoming a patron at Patreon. You can find the information in the description box below the video. Uh, I'm asking you to help support the work that I do. I do not take uh, any money from uh, corporations or uh, from any other uh, sources. So the information I share with you is the actual science as it comes out of the peer-reviewed journals. So there is no BS, there's no propaganda, there's no agenda. It's just I present the science and I explain to you what it means, or at least my interpretations of it based on my own experience as a scientist. I want this channel to grow. I consider, while I discuss many different uh, topics here, I, you notice I do focus a lot on climate issues. I consider climate uh, change to be the most pressing issue facing humanity today. Thus, I consider it important to disseminate this information to uh, a wider and wider, more and more people. And I need your help uh, to do this. So, yes, please subscribe. Uh, please tell others of the work that I do here. Please uh, share my videos on social media platforms uh, with your social media groups, what, what have you. We need to get uh, this information out there. So uh, for those of you who are supporting me on Patreon, I thank you greatly for your support and continued support. It does mean a lot to me. So together we can Get this information to more and more people. Thank you. Thank you for your support.